Oshkosh Media is government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for this edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick, and in a moment, we'll be joined by City Manager Mark Roloff. In the first half of today's show, we'll have some municipal news updates, including information from city departments. In the second half, we'll highlight items from the upcoming Tuesday, June 11th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And with that, we bring in our city manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here, Andy. All right, well, we have a lot to cover, um, and actually we have not on our previous programs done a, a roundup of the uh, construction projects that are happening around the city, and there are quite a few. So we thought we'd start off with that and uh, take a look at uh, some of the work that's being done around the city. Well, summer is construction season, so now that we're into uh, into the thick of summer, I think it's appropriate. And so we're able to get some good weather days so we can get some great video for uh, to show everybody. But, you know, there's a handful of projects going on around town. Wagyu Avenue is one of the uh, the ones on the uh, just the, just north of the river. Uh, that's actually doing very well. All the utility works complete, and we're currently paving on Wagyu between North Main Street and Court Street. So uh, between Court Street and Mill Street, Wisconsin Public Services finishing their work before paving can uh, begin uh, in about two or three weeks. So mm -hmm. that's doing very well, and I think Mother Nature has been very kind to us. Sure. Uh, so th yeah, that's been that's been great. Um, Cherry Street and Prospect Avenue, just north of the university. Mm -hmm. uh, utility work is complete on Prospect. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, because we have to coordinate with uh, the other utilities, Wisconsin Public Service in this case, they're finishing their work another two weeks before paving operations can take place there. So it's kind of on the same schedule. So mm -hmm. they're currently working on sanitary sewer on Cherry Street between West Lincoln and West New York Avenue. So uh, all this stuff you can look up on the Public Works website, but mm -hmm. we figured you'd get some nice video with this and mm -hmm. get a good view of it. So uh, the other big one on the south side, mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of that, that square of Fifth Avenue, Iowa Street, West Seventh Avenue, mm -hmm. and Michigan Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, over on West, West Fifth, the utility works complete, currently paving that. Uh, and meanwhile, over on Iowa, sanitary and water utility works complete. And we're going to be starting that large storm sewer uh, sewer box culvert this week. And paving will be happening in the next couple weeks. And then the utility work on West Seventh will begin uh, this week. So, uh, utility work. So, we're very pleased with how this project's going. A lot of people don't realize that, that the box culvert that we're talking about there on Iowa Street is a major um, box culvert that serves what's called Stringham Creek. Okay. We're actually snaking our way back to South Park eventually. And so, I've been looking at capital improvement projects for next year. And the next phase will eventually connect everything to that. So, uh, Stringham Creek will will finally have that connection from South Park to the Fox River. So that's a really important project we're talking about. And then the last projects uh, we want to talk about, there's two of them, uh, Grand Street and East 7th Avenue. That's east of Main Street. So here's Grand. Both of those projects are the secondary projects. Uh, they're scheduled to begin in mid-July. And based on the progress that's going on with these other projects, I think we're going to be okay getting started at that point. So a lot of those, by the time Grand and East 7th get started, uh, the other ones will be close to finishing up. So uh, there'll be some activity all summer long here. Absolutely. And we will keep folks updated on future editions of the show uh, to let everyone know uh, what is going on with these projects. But, but uh, a lot underway and uh, uh, keep an eye on the progress. All right, Mark, we also wanted to touch on, we mentioned it in the last show too, but we just wanted to give a reminder to, to folks that, that Interstate 41 is experiencing some, some rehab, and uh, that is taking place mainly in the area of the, the Butamore Bridge Causeway. And the US 45 southbound ramp onto I-41 southbound is closed. Uh, and so we just wanted to offer some, some tips for people. Yeah, well, this is a Department of Transportation project, but we know people are going to be impacted by this. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know that, you know, Oshkosh residents, we can give you some tips on places to go 
to avoid this, but the, the folks come in through town will not know anything except the formal detour route. Right. So the traffic impacts, you know, um, on, on the causeway itself, uh, the I-41 mainline, both directions are reduced uh, from three to two lanes for replacement of bridge approaches. And then those interchange ramps, the I-41 southbound of US, uh, uh, from US-45 is closed for a majority of the project. So that detour is, is shown in green, takes you down Algoma Boulevard, and then you go west on Wisconsin 21 to I-41. It is extremely busy at Algoma and Congress Avenue. Mm -hmm. I can't emphasize enough to you, avoid it if at all possible. Mm -hmm. um, the construction started uh, right after Memorial Day and it will be suspended during EAA because they know the impacts on that and they'll open up the traffic, but then they're gonna close it again and it uh, won't be until October 1st. So mm -hmm. just be aware of these different night, uh, these lane closures, uh, because there's a lot of things going on. So uh, here's Mark's tip for the day. Mm -hmm. If you're coming back into Oshkosh uh, and you, you don't want to, you want to avoid Algoma if all possible, mm -hmm. couple routes. You can continue on 45 after the 45-10 split, but get off at the Winnicott exit at Highway GG, slip over to Highway 76, and then um, if you want to go into town, take Jackson into town, or if you're on the west side, you can hop on very easily on I-41 mm -hmm. at 76. So just a little tip for our, our local friends. Another one that you might want to do, but it's going to get a little busy, is continue on US-10 until you get to 76 and go all the way down 76 until you get to 41, and then either continue on Jackson or hop on uh, I-41 southbound. Those will get you much easier and earlier onto I-41, and you'll avoid that dreaded, and I'm not kidding, mm -hmm. dreaded Algoma uh, Congress Avenue intersection. I wish I could tell you that you know that's going to go away, but as long as people are not familiar with the area, they're going to take that route. So mm -hmm. my advice to our, our local friends is take some of these other detour routes or pick one of your favorites because you know the back roads uh, uh, probably better than I do. So, but these are just Mark's tips for everybody. Sure, and this will help alleviate some of that that heavy traffic in that area too. If folks use some alternate uh, routes, right? And I know that there are businesses in Algoma Boulevard who are getting negatively impacted. Yeah. Their customers come visit, but then they can't get out. Okay, uh, sure. I mean, think of all the different shops that you you may go to on on North Algoma, and and I I I literally did one today, and it was not easy getting out. So. Try to avoid it at all possible, but keep staying with your local businesses. They, mm -hmm. they need the help. Absolutely. And more information can be found on the uh, Interstate 41 Rehab Construction website, and that is linked through the city's hot topics section on the uh, city's website. Uh, so you can get more information and, and uh, more detail there about that project. Okay, then uh, we also have been speaking a lot about uh, revaluation and uh, the uh, assessments in the city. And I understand that all of the residential notices of reassessment have been mailed, uh, but we just wanted to provide an update for folks about where the process is at. Right, well, you know, one of the things we talked about is residents have an opportunity to meet with someone in the assessor's office to mm -hmm. ask questions and challenge uh, what their uh, valuation might be. Uh, that process is called open book, and uh, people got their notices for several weeks now, but it is open and it continues through June 14th for residential properties. A property owner uh, can meet with city staff about their assessed value, what questions about, anything they may not agree with. Um, and so far, about a thousand people have come in and spoke about the assessor's office, about their notices. So uh, you still have the right to appeal even after you talk to one of our staff members. And that, uh, that appeal is reviewed by a citizen's board of review. Mm -hmm. It's not reviewed by city staff again. It's, it's you know five people in the community that will review that. Open book continues now through June 14th. If you got a question, I absolutely encourage you to do that. And then you still have a right to appeal even after that. So uh, just be aware of that. But meanwhile, uh, you know, if you got any questions, give the assessor's office a call. They might be able to answer the, it over the phone rather than coming in and during open book. But, uh, or email at assessor at oshkoshwi.gov. Any of those 
ways you can go to, to uh, contact folks. And what if somebody is a commercial property owner? Well, commercial property owners are on a different schedule. Uh, the notices are going to be mailed out uh, hopefully Monday, June 10th, and uh, it's been delayed a couple weeks, but the commercial values will be online as well as soon as possible, uh, even before we mail them out. So uh, you can be on the lookout for that. Open book continues for commercial properties through June 21st. So there'll be about a two week period, but the volume is less because there's a lot fewer commercial properties. But everybody has the same rights uh, to look at their evaluations for commercial properties as residences do. Um, but there'll be one week where it'll be just for commercial. So, you know, it may be good to wait until after the 14th. You can look at it, get your questions together, come on in and talk to somebody in our assessor's office. They're happy to help you on this. This is all about fairness. And I know some people have con concerns about that, but the purpose of the, the, the assessors are just trying to get the values right. Right, right. And they've been very busy helping folks and they're, they're glad to help out. So as you mentioned, give them a call at 236-5070. They'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, it's a good point out. Commercial open book is by appointment only. So that number is very important for that purpose. Okay, and more information is available in the Hot Topics section of the city's website. Uh, there's a lot of information there about, about the revaluation. Uh, you can really dive into it and learn a whole lot more about it and get your questions answered there uh, even before you may even need to do a call to the assessors. Okay, then we also want to point out that uh, folks have been receiving their vehicle registration uh, notices and the vehicle registration fee for Oshkosh residents is there. But, uh, but just a, a nuance is that if we have any viewers uh, that are outside of the city, uh, they might have seen that uh, on their, on their uh, registration free noti notification and uh, that might not have applied to them if they live outside of the city of Oshkosh. Right, if, if, you are a res if you are somebody who lives in the area who may be watching who does not live in the city of Oshkosh, you shouldn't be paying, you don't have to pay the vehicle registration fee. Similarly, if, if you're a, a resident of Oshkosh but your vehicle is kept somewhere else outside the city, double check that part there, it says vehicle kept in Winnebago County, City of Oshkosh. If you're not, if you're a resident of, say, the town of Black Wolf, uh, you might, it might still say City of Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can correct that, uh, and you just, uh, just have to contact the DOT and let them know that that's a mistake and you don't have to pay that extra fee. So just be aware of that. Um, then the other one uh, is uh, if you have a June sticker or later, you'll see that $35 fee added on to it. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand that originally we had thought that this was effective July 1st and not necessarily with a June sticker. So there was a little bit of a, a, a change there. Yeah, well, it wasn't so much of a change. It was our interpretation of what the state meant. State mm -hmm. said it's effective July 1, but in the DOT's eyes, a June sticker expires on June 30th, so technically the new sticker isn't effective until July 1. We were not aware of that, and they said, well, we're going to be sending them out, and it's the June stickers get the $35 fee. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wish they had told us that earlier because that isn't what we were led to believe, but mm -hmm. the July effective date is for the June sticker. So sorry about any confusion on that. We just want to let people know why that's the case. Okay, and really what this all comes back to is that this is a method to pay for special assessments. We, we just looked at all the road construction projects that are happening, and this is a way to fund this moving forward. Right, the residential property, well, all the properties are not gonna be charged the street portion of the assessments anymore because of this change. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a big advantage. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of streets in residential areas this year, and that's going to be a big benefit. And that will continue for future years. And that's what this has been about all along. Okay, and we also do have some frequently asked questions that are posted on the city's website. Uh, more information is available there uh, if you have uh, would like to find out more details about the entire program. Okay, then also, Mark, we wanted to point out that our Department of Public Works is seeking some information from residents. They have an open survey, and they're looking for some, some information from folks uh, just about their impressions of the Department of Public Works. 
Right. We have a, a survey that's called Polco. It's a, a product that we, uh, a service we receive, and it's a citizen engagement tool. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, you know, just doing some surveys, you know, just once a year, periodically different departments want to just see, get a finger on the pulse of, uh, mm -hmm. of the community. So Public Works is doing that. It's about nine questions. It you about two minutes to complete. So mm -hmm. check it out. It's right there under our hot topic section. And the survey is going to be open through June 16th. So we got another, you know, a couple of weeks to take a look at it. And it's really just, you know, getting some feedback and, you know, how we can better serve the public. So please mm -hmm. take just a couple minutes to fill it out. It'll be great. Right, and it's it's used for uh, the results will be used for future planning and initiatives, and um, I know that the the folks in Public Works are uh, very appreciative of of uh, residents taking the time to fill that out. Okay, then we also wanted to make mention uh, that uh, uh, just a reminder for folks about yard maintenance, and we also are uh, wrapping up, or we did wrap up the No Mo May, and uh, just a, a little bit of a look back on how that went this year. Yeah, well, No Mo May's ended, and we had 615 participants. You did have to register for that, uh, but we had 16, 615 participants, which was pretty good. So we want to thank everybody who uh, registered for that to help our ur urban ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, now, maybe somebody didn't sign up and maybe tried to get away without mowing for May. Um, all you got to do is sign up. It's easy, but whether you're participated officially or unofficially, your, um, your waiting period has ended. And so now the municipal code rules go back into, uh, back into play, and that says your grass cannot exceed eight inches in height. And all the benefits that there's uh, out there for the bees and all that, and pollinators, by June, the, that benefit's gone. So mm -hmm. time to mow, and then just a couple tips that we wanna make sure people uh, do. Yeah, a couple tips uh, when cutting long grass. Uh, folks can adjust their lawnmower to the highest height first. When, when they have that long grass, they can uh, raise that mower to its highest level and then cut the grass, wait a day, and then go back and cut at the, 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 the normal level. And that will help so that there's not so much grass all at once. And then it also just helps the, the lawn to to more naturally come back. Um, so that, that's one, one uh, idea there. And then another thought is uh, a reminder to not blow those grass clippings into the street. So here we're seeing uh, what not to do uh, yeah. to uh, not do this, uh, but, uh, but rather to uh, blow the grass the other direction. And you know that helps so that uh, that slippery surface isn't created for a cyclist like that or a motorcyclist. Uh, just helps for many reasons, including for uh, for clean water. Right, that blue green algae is a lot of uh, the grass getting into our storm sewer system. So keep it on the grass, and and you'll be just fine. So, uh, but and also in addition to that, I mean in that situation, please sweep it up. Mm -hmm. But you take your grass clippings to the yard waste drop off site over on 3rd Avenue. Uh, city permits required to use a facility, uh, but you can get it over at Kits and File or, or here at City Hall, uh, and it's only $35, uh, and you can drop off all the yard waste you can generate all summer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that is available for residents. Okay, then we also wanted to point out it's a very busy time for our Oshkosh Parks Department, and they have a lot going on. Yeah, there's you know four events that we're going to be talking about, but keep uh, your eyes out uh, for other things. Pollock Community Water Parks open. Uh, hours of operation are 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then Brews on the Bay actually started this past week. Uh, and for this summer, it's taking place at a new location over at Rainbow Memorial Park. Come for live music, food trucks, local beer. The next Brews on the Bay is scheduled for June 19th. And then meanwhile, we're going to continue that Tuesday night free concert series called Live at the Leech. Uh, gates open at 5.30 and uh, the band starts, goes from 6 to 9, but we got tons of family fun, face painting, bounce houses, food trucks, stuff like that. Very family friendly uh, for uh, the upcoming is going to be the Glam Band on June 11th. Uh, so we're happy that that's going on and uh, looking forward to Live at the Leech throughout the summer. And then a new event over there. Right. The June Dairy Day at Lee Champion Theater happens on Saturday, June 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a great family event. And bring the family to learn about the dairy industry, visit the petting zoo, bounce houses, face painting, all kinds of great things for, for everybody. 
All yeah. right. And then we also want to make uh, mention that over at the Oshkosh Fire Department, Station 17, uh, they've been involved with Reed Elementary School for several initiatives. Yeah, well, they had the uh, playground set over there that's very fire department oriented. So I think it started a little fun relationship between Reed Elementary and Station 17, which is right down the street on Algoma. Mm -hmm. um, so th they've gotten student artwork to uh, go over to the fire station, so that's kind of cool. And the, the student, uh, students in the third grade were painting firefighting theater art on, on ceiling tiles, and the students came to the station to see their artwork, meet the firefighters. So uh, we're really happy that uh, we've got this partnership. It's a great way to get out in the community, and fire department says, hey, maybe we'll find a future firefighter or two out of, the, out of those uh, kids over at Reed Elementary. Right, right. Great to see the artwork, and I'm sure the kids were excited to know that their artwork was displayed in a, fire, a real fire station. So all kinds of, of great partnerships there with the Oshkosh Fire Department. Well, Mark, I think we'll transition. We'll keep it right here, and uh, we'll talk about the uh, agenda items that are coming up in the upcoming Tuesday, June 11th Oshkosh Common Council meeting, and we'll dive right into that. Uh, I know that uh, at the beginning of the meeting, there is a public hearing, and this is relating to community, de community development block grants. And first of all, just a little bit of background, what is community development block grants? Well, you know, I've been doing this uh, for a long time, and this is actually the 50th anniversary of the creation of the Community Development Block Grant Program. We say CDBG for short, but uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program was created to give uh, grants to municipalities to address uh, issues related to um, low and moderate income individuals. Housing is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year's emphasis uh, is going to be big on housing because we know what an issue that is. And the, the council has said they've, they've wanted to see a greater emphasis on, on housing initiatives. So we're doing a lot of good things out there to, to help improve neighborhoods. And again, it's primarily geared towards low and moderate income individuals. So um, some examples of yeah. things we've done in the past. We've done some really good things. Um, the day-by-day -day shelter, um, we actually purchased the land upon which the building was built. And so we use that with community development block grant dollars because it was a perfect candidate for that program. Similarly, we've also assisted the Christine Ann Center. They're going through a rehabilitation of what has been called the Beach Building, which is right next door to City Hall. And uh, we gave them some funds to assist with the building purchase because they're going to be expanding their operations there. Mm -hmm. And again, that's very much geared towards uh, low and moderate income uh, guests that they have at Christine Ann. Sure. Um, but meanwhile, for, for the general community, uh, we've funded home rehabilitation products, uh, projects for low and moderate income residents. Uh, we are working with the uh, Oshkosh Fire Department for smoke detectors in homes for low and moderate income areas of the city. So as long as the area is low and moderate income primarily, we can provide that benefit to everybody. Um, so we're happy about that. A couple other things we've done, down payment assistance for families uh, that build a home through Habitat for Humanity. So mm -hmm. we've helped Habitat for Humanity that way, uh, helping those people get that down payment that is necessary part of that program. And then other things that we've done over the years is we've acquired and demolished blighted properties uh, in the central city because, you know, it, it get rid of that blight and then maybe open it up. Sometimes we've sold it to the neighbor for very little or we split it between two neighbors, split the lot so they have a nice side yard. So we've done little things like that. We're really, really proud of that program. Okay, a lot going on with that. All right, then we also have under our consent agenda uh, authorizing a grant application, and this re re uh, relates to urban forestry. Well, we've been fortunate enough to get from the Department of Natural Resources an urban forestry grant in the amount of three hundred eighty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and what that is intended for is to expand the inventory of urban trees with an emphasis on uh, lower-income areas. Um, so we've got a very active uh, tree planting program. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of impact because of emerald ash borer, but sure. this is to expand our inventory. So we're really happy about that. And this grant also uh, includes a program over at Oshkosh North to, to get some trees uh, planted over in the, uh, the ecological area just north of the high school. So mm -hmm. we're happy to partner with that, and that's all due to this grant. Excellent. 
All right, then we are also are approving a proposal for a uh, playground uh, over at 44th Parallel Park. This process involves you know, getting input from the neighbors, talking to our uh, parks advisory board about new playground sets in our different parks. So mm -hmm. uh, the, this year's project that's up is 44th Parallel Park. You see it's just, uh, you know, just north of um, 20th Avenue and just east of Maricopa, West Haven, things like that. Um, so we got input, and uh, for $289,000, we're going to get a brand spanking new um, uh, park uh, playground uh, with that rubberized surface. Very family friendly, very friendly for um, uh, children and maybe some adults of many uh, uh, of many abilities. So we're happy to be doing that, and uh, that's just part of our. Uh, our playground uh, uh, rehabilitation program. Exciting to see those improvements. All right, and then we have several special events, and one of which is welcoming our uh, new UW Oshkosh students to downtown. This is a really cool partnership between UW Oshkosh and the Downtown Business Improvement District, the BID, um, because a lot of times you'll hear students that know nothing about our downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the BID and the U uh, University said, how about if we have an event where the kids come downtown during their uh, their Titan takeoff, as they call it? So we've got a series of uh, stops, and we're going to uh, basically give them some preferred parking over there on Market Street by Opera House Square, so the buses can drop off the families, and they'll see, oh, this is pretty close to campus. Maybe we can go there, go for the farmers market, or just go to other shops in the downtown area. So we're real happy to, that uh, the bid and UWO are. Uh, um, collaborating on this and we're happy that uh, we're going to have uh, university students come in downtown Oshkosh. Excellent. It's great to see. Okay, then under new resolutions we have uh, the approval of a, a plan for a drive through restaurant located uh, on South Washburn Street. Yeah, this is uh, immediately north of Fire Station 16 and the water tower over there. Okay. Uh, it's going to be converted into a Freddy's restaurant, uh, to burgers and uh, custard type of restaurant. I think it's an East Coast uh, uh, operation. Uh, but over there, and there were some concerns about traffic, and so uh, the plan commission required that a traffic impact analysis get done, and the traffic plan was created. And based on the types of businesses that are around there, uh, we found that it will be compatible without really uh, disturbing traffic too much. Most of this Freddy's traffic apparently is more geared towards the evening. Oh. So, um, and a lot of businesses over there are kind of eight to five operations. So I don't think we're gonna have any major conflicts on that. Okay, very good. And then we also just briefly wanted to mention under future agenda items, we're looking at the upcoming strategic plan uh, for the city. Yeah, this is for the 2025-2026 strategic plan. We do our strategic planning in two year increments. And uh, the council met earlier this year, uh, a retreat with department heads, and the department heads met with supervisors, and we also had a focus group of community members. So law, a broad range of people providing input, and staffs put it together for council to consider. We're, the council's gonna get a copy of it this week, but then we'll give it a couple weeks for uh, them to review it. We have some new council members, we want them to review it. But we wanna get it done before the budget process starts, yeah. so that as we're getting into the 2025 budget, We've got the strategic plan guiding us through this process. Okay, very good. Well, Mark, we crammed a lot in the show today. I think we had a, a lot of material here. So we really appreciate all of your insights and all the information today. It's always a pleasure, Andy. Thanks. All right. And thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate your time and thanks for, for tuning in. Again, that Oshkosh Common Council meeting is at 6 p.m. this Tuesday, June 11th at City Hall. That's at 215 Church Avenue. You can watch that live on GovTV, which is Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, streaming on YouTube or OshkoshMedia.org. Or you can listen on the radio, Oshkosh FM 101.9, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for phones and tablets. And you can always use your favorite streaming device, including a Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. Just search for the Oshkosh Media app. And you can always visit our YouTube channel for government meeting archives and the full library of Oshkosh Media programming. So please join us again in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>